This is Dennis McMahon welcoming you to Positively Vermont. And uh, my special guest today is Alex McCracken uh, from Gateway Festivals, uh, who is going to be speaking with us about the Alberg Totality Festival coming up in beautiful Alberg, Vermont. Uh, welcome, Alex. Thank you, Dennis. It's my pleasure to be here today. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here on behalf of Gateway Festivals. I'm the uh, board of the chair for the uh, nonprofit that's putting together this uh, amazing event for Alberg, Vermont. Uh, we couldn't be more excited. We have a full three day spread of events planned uh, to celebrate the eclipse from April 6th uh, to April 8th. Uh, we're going to be on the shores of Lake Champlain here in beautiful Alberg. Uh, we have live music, we have uh, vendors and drinks and food. Uh, it's going to be a really incredible time for people of all ages to come out and join us for this uh, truly once in a lifetime celestial event. Um, we're pulling out all the stops to welcome Vermonters, uh, out-of-staters, people from all across the world to join us in Alberg to celebrate uh, the first total solar eclipse to be visible in North America since 2017, uh, and the last one to be visible here in this century. So we're going to be very excited to celebrate this with everybody. Tell us first a little bit about yourself and your organization. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Um, well, about me personally, I, I actually came to Vermont the long way around uh, through the Midwest and through Oregon. Uh, so I was in Oregon for the last eclipse in 2017, uh, which was such an incredible experience uh, to see that firsthand. And I I'm, I'm feel very lucky to be here on this coast for this one. Um, Gateway Festivals started uh, this year. Um, it is a volunteer-led uh, and volunteer-organized uh, nonprofit um, here in town. It's, uh, it is um, entirely based on the ideas of community engagement and economic development for Alberg. Um, we are very focused on bringing uh, events into the town that will help uh, foster economic development, foster community growth and engagement. Uh, we really see a bright future here in Alberg, and, and we feel that our organization can help uh, be a catalyst for some of that growth and change um, that people want to see in uh, our community. Um, we, we're made up, like I said, entirely a volunteer board, um, and we also have folks from town leadership who uh, have been engaged with us as well. Um, and we're, excuse me, we're very excited to have uh, such a, a wide group of people that are uh, really committed to making Alberg the best place it can possibly be um, and to bringing these events in for the community. Um, we're hoping that this is going to be the first event in a long term uh, series of events for the Gateway Festivals. Um, we're hoping that the Totality Festival will be just the inaugural event uh, for many years to come. Tell us a little bit about the town of Alberg, you know, a little bit of its history, geography, location, and uh, how do people get there? Yeah, absolutely. That's great questions, because I, I know a lot of folks aren't uh, super aware of us. Um, we are uh, just a stone's throw away from Canada, um, up on the Lake Champlain Islands. Uh, originally, we were actually a very bustling railroad town um, and had a lot of industry here with uh, shipping coming up to Canada, but also over to New York and uh, into mainland Vermont to our east. Um, we're a peninsula, actually. It's, uh, we we um, are part of the islands, but we, we consider ourselves a little separate because we are a peninsula coming down from Canada. And uh, as such, we, we have an identity as kind of the gateway town. Uh, we are the first stop in from Canada. We're the first stop in from New York. Uh, we're the first stop in from Franklin County. Um, and so when you're uh, coming into the islands, you're coming into Vermont, Alberg really is the, the gateway to all of it. Um, and we've had such a, a strong history of economic development based off that in our past. Um, and it's been a hard stretch for a little while for Alberg and for small towns like Alberg in Vermont. Um, we have about 2000 people. It's a very small town. Um, and that um, <clears throat> the development that we have seen in some other parts of the state hasn't always reached up here to more rural areas of Vermont. Um, so part of what we're hoping to do with this project is 
bring more folks up to see everything that Alberg has to offer, uh, to get folks coming up to the islands to explore what we have going on up here uh, all year round, um, and to kind of foster some of that economic development here, uh, where we have an amazing opportunity to do so with our geography, and also with our, our spirit of community that is uh, really indelibly Vermont. Uh, it's a, a hardworking, very, um, uh, a very, um, uh, very strong community here. Tell us a little about this uh, eclipse uh, that's going to happen. And uh, actually, uh, how does Alberg fit into that? Um, specifically on the scientific level, this is going to be the first total eclipse since 2017. Uh, tell us a little bit about the eclipse and, and the background of that. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd be happy to. Um, I, this is going to be such a cool event. Uh, it is uh, a major celestial event. It happens very rarely where the, the, the moon is going to completely eclipse the sun and everything below in the zone of totality will be in complete darkness uh, for a few minutes. And it is really, really, really cool. Um, day becomes night, animals react, things are going to be really, it's, it's a very strange, uh, environment, but it's really, really is such a once in a lifetime experience. And as you noted, the last eclipse to hit North America was 2017, uh, which ran a very different route than this one. Um, so the, the zone of totality for this upcoming eclipse, uh, stretches in a band from Texas all the way here to New England. Um, so for folks who are in the band of totality, um, we are going to get three and a half minutes of complete darkness. Uh, and that is going to happen at 3.26 p.m. on Monday, April 8th. Um, and we in Albert are right on the line in the, the zone of totality. So we have some of the longest period of darkness of anywhere in state or anywhere in the world. Uh, we really do get to say, and this is such an exciting thing, that Alberg is going to be at the center of the universe for three and a half minutes on April 8th. Um, so we, we're really excited about that. And it's, it's uh, an incredible opportunity for our town, for the whole region. And the amount of people that we're expecting to come up for this is really extraordinary. Um, we're, we're expecting historic numbers in Vermont and in the islands um, that are, are really, uh, you know, blowing away some of the other events we've had in the past here. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to welcome uh, a, a really large amount of people from out of state, from other parts of Vermont, um, into our community to celebrate this. Uh, we really could not be more excited about it. Well, who put this all together? It sounds like a, a, an amazing effort. And it must have uh, started with some idea. And I'm curious as to who came up with all this, uh, linking Alberg into the, into the eclipse. Yeah, well, I, I mean, a lot of folks in town have been thinking about this for a long time because um, we, we've we known for a little while that we were going to be in this path. Um, but the, the Gateway Festival's project really started uh, with myself and uh, Josie Henry and a few other dedicated volunteers uh, who now sit on our executive board um, who have been in these conversations for months now, um, putting together the groundwork to do something really incredible for the town. Um, you know, opportunities like this don't come around for a small town like Alberg very much. So we really have been pulling out all the stops to try to make everyone in the community feel engaged with the project. Uh, we've got folks from the Legion Outpost to the library who are putting on events for the uh, festival. Um, we're engaging uh, a, a number of uh, businesses in the area as our, our peninsula partners. Um, we also have some wonderful partnerships uh, with businesses in town who are helping us put together this festival um, on a, a real shoestring budget. And uh, it's been a really incredible to see the work that everybody's put in, the dedication from our volunteers, uh, from the folks in the community. Uh, it's it's really been a whole, uh, a whole community effort. And uh, it's been really incredible to see. And, and we're so excited to be putting this together, to be putting something that is so representative of our community and being able to share that with Vermont and with the rest of the world. Uh, we're, we're tremendously excited about that opportunity and, and we're going to be putting something together that's, that's really professional. And, you know, I, I think that's part of what we're hoping to surprise people with, um, when folks think about Alberg, 
they don't necessarily think about a really professionally put together operation. And so what we want to do here is show them that we have a lot here in Albert uh, to contribute and we have a lot to share with the rest of the state. Um, and we hope that going forward, we'll have folks coming up here um, from out of state, from other parts of Vermont to uh, engage with our festivals for years to come. About how many people do you expect uh, to attend? It's a moving number, uh, but I can say that the state of Vermont as a whole is expecting at least 200,000 people. Uh, that amount is going to be centered in the Northwest and St. Albans is expecting 60,000 people. Based on uh, the information that we have, uh, I'm hesitant to, to provide a number, but I'm hoping that we'll get somewhere uh, in the realm of, of several thousand people. Now, how is the, the viewing of this going to be set up? Uh, when this event occurs, are people going to be on stands or are they just going to be looking up at the sky like uh, one of those Close Encounters movies? How is this <laughs> going to go? Well, firstly, I'm a big fan of that movie, so I love the reference. But um, I, I'll say, Dennis, that the nice thing about the eclipse is that it's uh, visible from pretty much anywhere if you're in the totality. The The sun is uh, unobscured from all parts of our festival grounds. Um, so we've we've tracked where it'll be roughly at 326 in the afternoon. We've set up a few viewing areas for people to uh, consolidate and, and watch the eclipse. But also it's going to be uh, it's going to be amazing no matter where you are on the peninsula. So we've set up several suggestions for folks to see it um, from nearby state parks on the peninsula. Uh, we have uh, the center of town and the parade grounds are gonna have excellent viewing. And we also have our, our friends at Green Mountain Fireworks who are uh, preparing a finale fireworks show for uh, after the eclipse. And so they'll have uh, a nice viewing area where we can uh, direct folks to view the fireworks at the tail end of the eclipse. Well, one thing you always hear about when we have an eclipse anywhere, uh, precautions uh, about viewing. Uh, are there any precautions that are going to be in place or can people just look up at it? And uh, uh, you know what I'm referring to. So do people yes. need special visors? Of that nature? Uh, yes, absolutely. Well, firstly, um, we are doing our, our, our due diligence to make sure we're messaging proper eclipse safety viewing for everybody. That's very, very important. Um, do not look directly at an eclipse uh, that will cause permanent eye damage. Um, we will be reinforcing that message more and more as we get closer, I'm sure. Uh, everybody will be sick of hearing us say it by the time we're there, but don't look directly at an eclipse. Uh, we have eclipse glasses, uh, so we have uh, several thousands eclipse glasses that we'll be uh, distributing for free at the festival. Um, we uh, are all, we're currently in the process of procuring more, uh, and we have additional vendors who are going to be coming in uh, to supply additional glasses. So we will we will have a, a wide um, a variety and assortment of eclipse glasses and viewers that people can use at the festival. But we always recommend that folks bring extras, uh, grab an extra pair, make sure you pick one up. People are gonna be giving them out uh, pretty much constantly from now until the eclipse. Um, and I, I believe there are also resources through many uh, towns and organizations uh, like we've been able to procure glasses through the state. Um, so that has been uh, helpful for us to make sure that we have those resources available for everybody because of course uh, safety and health are always our number one priority um those are factors that we're bearing in mind uh as we continue eclipse planning and uh setting up logistics for the festival um safety and and security are always top of mind and what about the uh scientific community and schools are, are they being involved in this in any way yeah, um, well, we, we've been in talks with a few uh, uh, scientifically oriented folks from professors to meteorologists uh, to kind of our, our local uh, eclipse enthusiasts to put together some talks and educational workshops. Uh, so we're definitely going to be prioritizing the uh, scientific and educational uh, component of this. Um, we've got some folks who are going to be coming to talk to the community about those things. And we're really excited to, to hear from, from people who know a lot more than I do about uh, all of this. Um, and we, uh, we're certainly very excited about that. 
Excellent. And are there going to be exhibits or uh, different uh, booths or uh, other venues where uh, uh, merchants and uh, organizations will uh, be on display besides the Eclipse? Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the things we're most excited about is the ability to showcase our local and regional economy. Um, so on top of our partners uh, and vendors that have already uh, come to work with us, we're really excited to be able to showcase the local uh, businesses in Alberg, the folks on the islands and uh, in uh, Franklin County. Um, we are going to have a, a wide variety of vendors and uh, market a uh, whole marketplace set up for folks to uh, showcase uh, their goods and their products and their businesses. Um, we're really excited to be able to include, um, you know, as many folks as, as we possibly can. We've got a pretty large uh, parade ground, so we're able to accommodate a, a wide assortment of uh, businesses and organizations. Um, so we're encouraging folks, uh, get in contact with us through our website. Uh, if you have a business that you'd like to uh, sign up with us as a vendor or a partner, uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, we have a, a, a really exciting event going on here. We've got a lot of cool stuff planned. And uh, this is really an opportunity for uh, folks to showcase what they do on uh, not just a, a stage for the entire state, but a national and global stage uh, for this event. Um, this is really um, going to be a historic moment for Vermont. And at the moment, um, we are the only three-day festival planned for that weekend. Um, so we really are uh, intending to be Vermont's premier eclipse celebration for the weekend of April 6th to 8th. I know this is always a concern with, with such events, but tell us uh, about some of your partners, so to speak, in security and law enforcement and parking. and How, how are you going to accommodate that, that kind of thing? Who are you working with? Yeah, well, I, again, I think this is um, this is another place where having the whole community effort has been really crucial. Uh, you know, we're a small community. Everybody knows everybody, but we can really come together to accomplish some incredible things. Uh, so we have, you know, our, our local fire and rescue folks have been engaged in this process. Local town leadership has been engaged in this process. Uh, we have you know, our, our, our town uh, uh our town planner, our town moderator, um, who is also helping to coordinate security. Um, we have, you know, just kind of a full community buy-in on making sure that we're taking care of the things we need to take care of um, to ensure a safe and successful event. Um, so we we have, you know, already uh, made the arrangements necessary with emergency transportation, with uh, parking and uh, traffic direction, uh, with um, sanitation and trash, uh, you know, the, the things that, uh, the, the less fun things that you always have to think about and putting on an event like this. But what's really made it happen is the community. And, and for every need, there's somebody here in Alberg that knows how to fill it. And we've just gotten an incredible amount of buy-in from the folks here in town who want to see this happen, who want to uh, really participate in something that is such an amazing and unique opportunity for Alberg. Um, and so we're getting everybody involved that we can and an incredible core of volunteers. Great. Um, what about follow through? What's going to be happening after this in, in terms of Alberg's interest in economic development and uh, contacts with the rest of the world and, and, and trade and communications? What's going to be the follow up? Yeah, that's uh, that is a great question because that's really what a lot of this is angled towards is how do we promote Alberg and ensure that we can create economic growth that is sustainable and helps this community remain affordable and remain economically viable. Um, so what we have tried to do here with Gateway Festivals <clears throat> is highlight and develop the identity of Valberg as the gateway town. Uh, we are right here at the crossroads uh, in northern Vermont. Uh, everything comes through us on Route 2 uh, from New York, from Montreal, uh, from St. Albans, up from Burlington. So for us, we really are at a crossroads, both literally geographically and 
metaphorically in our town's development and where we go from here as a community and our identity. Um, and so I think what we're hoping to accomplish here in a lot of ways is a revitalization of Alberg. Um, we've seen some of that already in the last few years. We've had some businesses moving into town, which is a, a really wonderful thing to see. Um, and that growth, I, I think uh, we're moving in the right direction and we're hoping that gateway festivals can really be a catalyst for that. Um, back in 2017, there were several towns that did a similar CLIPS event uh, in rural parts of the Western US, in Wyoming, in Oregon. And they experienced an incredible bo boost from this. They, they found that their investment paid off significantly in economic development, in visibility, and also in folks, importantly, that had never been to their communities before, but came for this event and really enjoyed it and decided that maybe they would come back later. Uh, so that those first time visitors who plan to come back again is such a valuable and important uh, demographic for development and for uh, ensuring that Alberg uh, continues to, to enjoy economic growth in the way that I, I think it really can. Um, so those are the, you know, what we're hoping to do is put together something that really impresses people, that really wows them, that really shows them that Alberg has a lot of potential and a lot of uh, growth ahead of us. And we have an opportunity here to provide a platform for that. Great. Now, this is going to go from April 6th uh, to April 8th. This give us the times and how people can get in there and maybe if they want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope they never do. Uh, welcome. We welcome them up to town. Um, uh, so, yes, yeah, so it's April 6th. Uh, we're uh, starting off the festivities with a parade on Saturday, April 6th. Um, I believe that the parade grounds start at, uh, I think our festival grounds open at 11. Um, I'll double check those dates for you, but they're on our website. Um, and we're running all Sunday the 7th. Uh, so from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, festival grounds will be open. And then on Monday the 8th, which is Eclipse Day, uh, we'll be opening the parade grounds around 9 a.m. And uh, the main event is at 3.26 p.m. And we'll be wrapping up with fireworks right after that. Yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. Well, that is wonderful. Uh, that is really sounds very exciting. Um, and uh, are there any uh, other organizations uh, maybe in the region that are you're working with uh, other than the ones you mentioned locally? Yeah, well, we have a... a, a... Peninsula Partners Program that has been really successful so far, where uh, we have a, a larger sponsorship uh, tier level uh, for national or state organizations that have uh, a little bit more cash to burn. Um, but we also want to acknowledge that the local businesses here on the islands and in the peninsula really, and in Franklin County, really deserve to be highlighted in this event. And so what we put together is uh, on our website, you can find it, it's called the Peninsula Partners Program, where for a, a much reduced uh, rate, we, ha we have an opportunity for businesses in Grand Isle and Franklin County mm -hmm. to become sponsors with us and become involved in the festival in that way. And we are always welcoming more people to come and join us on that. Um, so far, we have several um, really amazing Peninsula partners, Green Mountain Fireworks, Kramer and Ken, uh, Brill Ford. Um, we've, uh, and again, these, uh, the Islander as well. I, I would like to plug the Islander, um, who is uh, about to celebrate their 50th anniversary um, here on the islands as our local paper. Um, so we're really excited to be able to partner with our, our Peninsula partners um, we're looking forward to uh, joining with with more organizations, um, and we encourage anybody who who may want to get involved to reach out through our website. That's great, Alex. Uh, give us that website again. Just say it. We're going to put it in the on the uh, on the notes. But tell us that website. Yeah, absolutely. The website is gatewayfestivals.com. and you can go there to register for the event. It is a completely free event. We don't need any money. We don't want any money. We want to put this on for the community. But 
we want to make sure that we get an accurate headcount. So if you are able to register, we encourage you to do so. Um, if you're interested in reaching out to become a volunteer, a partner or a sponsor, uh, or if you have a business that you'd like to set up a vendor stall at our marketplace, please get in contact with us through the website. Again, that's gatewayfestivals.com. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Alex. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll be getting a lot of participation from our viewers. Uh, and I want to thank you for appearing on Positively Vermont. My guest has been Alex McCracken of Gateway Festival, speaking about the upcoming Alberg Totality Festival, celebrating the total eclipse of the sun on April 6th through April 8th. This is thank Dennis you. McMahon, and thank you for watching.